Tech Bishop here. I've been reading some of my comments on some of my videos, and some of my subscribers call me um, one called me special, and one said something like, uh, "Stay just the way you are." You know, and I, I get to thinking. Oh, and this is a action figure, hemp seed attic, not a doll action figure. Anyway. Getting back to the point, I think maybe some of my subscribers think I'm crazy or mentally ill. I don't know, but I'm going to show you something, and uh, I don't think they're going to allow this to stay up either because what I'm about to show you, it could be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Here's the main ingredient that you can't get, so I'm not too worried. Get a uh, bottle of Lysol. Take uh, one cap full. Maybe no. Won't look too much. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about the Hogville in just a minute. That's what this movie is mainly about, this video. But I want to show you all that I'm not really special. Okay, this is peroxide. Do not try this at home. Please do not try this. Cap of peroxide. You've got to know what you're doing if you're going to mix chemicals. I'm telling you. A baking soda. Just about what a little knife will hold. A baking soda. Special ingredient. There it is. <laughs> you can't read it. It's in another language. Okay. Do not inhale this stuff either. If you were to try to do it, but do not try it. I don't need a... Okay, I got the Altoid. Altoid in. Okay, put the Altoid in. Now, if you're ready, like I said, I'm going to have to take this video down. before you get put up. Go ahead and flag it everybody. I can see myself. Go ahead. Call the glow stick people and tell them you saw how to make glow stick juice. Go ahead. I don't even care. Now who's crazy? Now who's crazy? Secret ingredient. <laughs> Look! No freeze frame. Okay, freeze frame. Zoom in on that. Freeze frame. Okay, what I really want to talk about was the Hawkbill knife and the Barlow knife. There's also a part of the story. Back when I was in 7th grade, you were judged by how t 
tough you were for some reason or another about what kind of knife you carried. My grandfather used to run a uh, bait truck which had worms and crickets in it. He was a uh, preacher. He knew all the back roads of North Carolina, so he knew all the country stores. So he taught the man that owned the uh, bait shop to let him make a little route for himself on the back side of eastern North Carolina. Made a pretty good living doing it. I rode with him a lot in the summertime. And I don't know if some of you guys that are my age or older remember Barlow used to sell their knives in these little cards that would sit on the uh, counter of a country store. There'd probably be ten of them in there to have these Barlow knives. And the thing about a Barlow knife, or any knife at the time, you had the little fingernail clip slot. It would probably be stationed like that inside of the cardboard um, point of purchase, I guess, countertop display, whatever. And I wanted to borrow, but then one week I go there and these hawk bills are sitting right beside of it, same price. And I'd heard a boy at school talking about his daddy had a hawk bill. And I think these are pruning knives. I think electricians like them too. But uh, it's called a hawk bill. It was supposed to be the ultimate weapon. If you had this, you were a bad man in school. And this is back when you could carry knives to school and nobody cared. So just showing you the way I think, my grandfather bought this knife and I wanted this one and it was absolutely not. They were both sitting up here together because, you know, as you know, the hog bill's got plenty of blade, you can grab it, it's, it's ready to go. And I just found this knife, it is a case knife, I'm a little surprised it was a case, but uh, I thought it was a barlow all this time. My thinking was, we paid for the Barlow, the man went into the back of the store, I take the Barlow, put it back in the display case, and grab this, pocket it, and so I got me a hog bill. Well, little do I know, next week, he goes back to the store, and the man tells him what I did, somehow he caught me which I thought I was smart. I was about probably 12 years old, 11, 12 years old. So my granddaddy calls. My mother told her what I did, that I had this dangerous hogbill knife that I had swapped before the bar load. And I said, I didn't. But I had it. Where's the bar load? I couldn't find it. I looked and looked and looked. So I had to go out on my own with my little paper route money, which I've always had money. I've, I've been doing a paper route since I was 12 years old. And went back to another country store and bought another Barlow so I could have one to show. And they still knew I was lying, but they couldn't prove it. So they're like, okay, is that all you got to say? I said, yeah, that's all I got to say. Okay. That was it. That's my story of the Hawkbill knife, how I was one of the toughest guys in school. And it did get taken away from me. There was a truant officer came to school one day, and he saw my pocket bulging this knife. And he's like, what is that? Now, this is to show you the difference in the times. I told him what it was. He's like, let me see it. I pulled it out. He said, you're not supposed to have this, are you? No, sir, it's my daddy's knife, you know. He said, it'll be in the principal's office today at 3 o'clock. You can come get it then. Take it home and don't bring it back. That was what happened with a hogbill knife in a 7th grader's pocket. That's, that's how strict things were back then. So, anyway, that's the, that's the hogbill story, boring as it is. Still glowing. Can you see me? Anyway, Tag Bishop, 
signing out.